The next thing we're going to look at is provisioning and deprovisioning policies. These are a specific type of policy designed when some sort of object is either created or terminated. So for example, if I'm going to create a new user account, I would use the provisioning policy for users to set how I want that user to be provisioned. Let's take a look at that. Here I have just one, but I could just as easily have multiple ones doing different things. What we can see here is that I'm doing a whole bunch of different things. For example, I'm generating all of its login information. While this looks very complex, what I'm really doing here is very simply telling it, taking from the first letter of the first name attribute, and an X if there's nothing in there, followed by the last name of the user, followed by uniqueness number if there's a duplicate. And then I'm using that to create their login name. Here I'm setting their Exchange mailbox. In this world they have on-prem Exchange, or they have a hybrid world where the uh, mailbox is required to be created on-prem. And here I'm going to generate the email alias. And what you can see here is I've told it, just go ahead and use the login name that I just created in the, in the first part of this policy. Here I'm integrating with our authentication services product so that I can create a Unix user and that user can use Active Directory on a Unix system. Here I'm creating their home directory and of course I can use variables and whatnot here. Here's how I'm setting their home folder, here's how I'm setting their share, all of this is, can be done automatically so that nobody has to do these things manually anymore. And lastly, I want to validate the user's display name and how it's showing up in Active Directory itself. And again, you can see the policies. We talked about this a little while ago, how they're set and what they, what they need to do. One of the beauties of Active Roles is that not only do we have policies when an account is created, we also have policies when an account is removed, so termination. We use the phrase, deprovisioning of an account to talk about what we're going to do when we terminate a user. Let's take a look at that. Here I'm doing some fairly obvious things. I'm setting it so that the user can't log in anymore. I'm disabling the account, I'm scrambling their password, I'm scrambling their username, and one of my favorite things to do is I'm also renaming the account, and I'm doing this so if somebody from say the help desk goes in and later on needs to do something with the account, they can tell that account's been deprovisioned. So if a terminated employee calls the help desk the next day, the help desk will instantly know that that user no longer works here and that maybe they should contact HR instead of IT. Same concept with Exchange. How do I want to handle their Exchange mailbox? We'll also delete the account after a period of time if we choose to. And in this particular case, I've chosen 180 days to do that. And the last thing I'm doing here is I'm moving the account to a different OU. That way that everything is kind of the way I want it in AD. Incidentally, if there's something that, that we don't do natively, we have a whole set of rules for both provisioning and deprovisioning. You can kind of see here, I can do notifications, I can do reports, whatever I need to do. I can also do approvals for that matter as well. But if there's something that I need to do we can't natively do, I can use a script execution. So any place in active roles, I can hook in with a script and have the script actually do whatever it is that I want to do if it's something we don't have built into active roles. And that's really where a lot of the beauty comes into this. We have customers who have tons of little scripts to do things that are really unique to their company, and they're able to run those scripts right inside active roles without having to build a whole infrastructure to support it. Lastly, we do have, and I can't easily show this to you, but we do have what we call undo deprovision. We store everything we do when we deprovision an account or a group or whatever it is. And if later on you decide that you want to bring that back, we can basically say undo deprovision and it will take that account and put it right back the way it was before it started. So if somebody leaves on Friday and Monday morning decides, hmm, maybe I shouldn't have quit, we can very quickly put them back where they were supposed to be. That's one of the other beauties of active roles.